Oh, somebody is joining us from Italy. All right, welcome from across the ocean. Amazing. Like across two oceans, I guess, if we're, you know, Hawaii and Italy. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, you can just get comfortable. We're gonna be starting in a couple of minutes. So amazing women to recognize and hear from today. Welcome for everyone who's just joining in now. We'll get started soon. Can it relax, get comfortable. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Her Story Award Ceremony on this beautiful Saturday um, in June. My name is Katarina Connery. I'm Vice President for Women's Federation for World Peace USA. I will be your MC for today. Um, I always love these Her Story programs because there's so many amazing stories that come out from amazing women who've done so many things, who, you know, accomplished big, small, in between, and also, especially the heart behind the Her Story Award is to really honor honor the uh, the accomplishments, not just the accomplishments, but also um, the challenges that went into. Uh, you know, accomplishing those things and uh, reaching those uh, those goals that they've made for themselves. So actually, I don't want to get too much into more about the Her Story Award because you'll hear about that in a minute. I just wanted to say welcome to everyone. I saw in the chat that we have people from Hawaii and Denver and Maryland, and I'm in New Jersey and Arizona and yeah, all over Minnesota. So Yes, welcome, welcome. And I know many people will be watching this on Facebook. So yeah, let's get started. So first and foremost, we wanted to give kind of a general introduction to what is the Her Story all about? Because yeah, it was created and founded with a specific purpose in mind. And also to give a little background about Women's Federation for World Peace. If you, know, you haven't been uh, with us for a long time, if you're new to our organization, we're going to be hearing from our president for WFWP USA, Kaylee Moffitt. So let's uh, welcome her up. Thank you. And good afternoon and good morning, or maybe good evening. If you're, I don't know what time it is in Italy for that person who joined us from Italy. My name is Kaylee, and I recently, earlier this year, had the distinct honor and pleasure of being welcomed as the new president for Women's Federation USA. 
And Women's Federation for World Peace is an organization that has, an, has existed for over 30 years. It's a diverse international network of women leaders like the ones that we're recognizing today who are investing in creating a more peaceful society. But everything we do starts with the understanding that we as women really need to become the best versions of ourselves so we can make an impact in our different spheres, whether that's in your marriage or in your family or in your society or your community. But we really believe that it's women that have a unique understanding and unique attributes that need to be brought into our world at this time. And so everything we do is trying to bring that to the forefront. Our organization was founded by Mother Moon and she is someone who I personally really respect and look up to. She came from North Korea and escaped to South Korea during the time of the Korean War and has traversed incredible difficulties, experienced what it's like to be a refugee. And as a Korean woman has traveled the world working to bring together people of different races, different cultures, different religions under the common purpose of being one global family under God, our heavenly parent, and seeking solutions and resolutions that can move us forward to a more peaceful world. So if you haven't yet already, I absolutely recommend checking out her memoir, The Mother of Peace. Happily, I can share that in the chat if you haven't. And today is about celebrating women like her who have done incredible work and have touched lives of many and are the kind of women that we wanna uplift and emulate in our lives, in our families, in our societies. So when I first became the president of Women's Federation in February this year, the Her Story Award was one of the things that I was most excited about because first of all, it's such a clever name, right? The Her Story Award. And of course, it's a play on the idea of history, which we look back on many of the amazing people who have done great works for our human collective society. But the name history doesn't always bring up the, the women in our, in our history. So the idea of celebrating her story is making sure that the story of women and the wisdom of women is being told as we celebrate the achievements that are happening right here and right now. And along with telling her story today, we're going to hear incredible speeches and words of wisdom from women who have overcome many challenges, as Katerina mentioned earlier. We're also pooling into this collective wisdom for our society and for our future that I'm so grateful to be sharing with all of you today. I had a chance to meet each of our awardees earlier this week, and I am not shy in saying how excited I am to be able to award them today. If you are joining us here, you're really in for a treat, and I know you're going to be wowed just as I have been by each of these women. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for our nominators and our nominees who will soon be awardees in just a few minutes, and I will pass it back to Katerina. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, President Kayleigh, uh, for sharing a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so today we're going to be um, hearing some amazing stories of wisdom and uh, trials and uh, really the lessons that were learned along the way. So um, yes, for each, we have three amazing awardees today. Um, so for each of them, they'll be sharing their story, the story behind the story, so to speak. Um, and uh, I'll be giving a brief introduction to each person from their bio. They'll also be introduced a little bit more personally and we'll present the award. And then afterwards, um, President Caleb will be welcoming them up to share um, her story. So our first awardee today is Julie Fippen. She is the founder and CEO of Supportive Friends. So supportive friends like so. Um, <laughs> and that'll be clear in a moment why. So during trips to uh, remote schools in rural Zimbabwe, where she was supplying basic education materials, Julie learned that young girls who are not properly equipped for their menstrual cycle, they aren't allowed to attend school. As a mother, Julie thought of how fortunate her daughters are, imagining them not attending school for that reason was not an option. So with that in mind, she decided to do something to help girls in those rural communities. 
Otherwise, these girls drop out of school or they repeat grades because they miss school during their menstrual cycle. So with vision, compassion, talent, and generosity of wonderful individuals, Julie founded So Portive Friends in May 2016. Uh, the core of their mission is to enable and encourage the education of young women in Africa by teaching the skill of sewing to all women, addresses, and works toward the re resolution of the feminine hygiene crisis. So um, that is from her bio. We also wanna hear a little bit more personally, why was she nominated for this Her Story Award? So we're gonna hear a little bit from uh, Ms. Elizabeth Ahe, who is the chairwoman for Women's Federation DC chapter. She'll give a little bit more of a personal no note to who is Julie Fippen. So go ahead, take it away, Elizabeth. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen on this call. Thank you so much for this opportunity that I can share about Julie. I haven't met Julie uh, in person yet. I'm looking forward as uh, I travel to Zimbabwe next uh, in seven days, actually, and then Judy also be traveling, so we'll meet there. I, I heard a lot about Judy from my niece. My niece is in Zimbabwe, and she's now the coordinator for the Zimbabwean I know, mission, you know, so supportive. Uh, she spoke so much about Judy, you know, her heart, you know, uh, passion for what she does and you know as a mother herself you know just wanting to give going beyond you know you know what people expect you know and uh, each time she goes to Zimbabwe she uses her money and she wakes up like three in the morning when she you knows she's planning for this trip you know organizing things and then go to work then come back and again do the same thing. So as I heard from my niece, and then um, even saw the pictures, uh, I was moved, you know, and touched by you know our kind of heart. And I spoke to my niece, like Women Federation, you know, we have the same passion, you know, with a mother's heart, we want to reach out and you know to bring peace to do a lot of projects. And then I said, hmm, I think I better nominate, you know, Julie, you know. And Julie has gone so many times they are starting as from a bio, starting with the you know uh, education materials and then realizing that in these communities, the girls don't go to school when they have the periods. I'm from Africa. I know how it is. There were times when it was hard, you don't have money. Sometimes you had to use toilet paper, you know, and some girls you know, use, you know, some leftover materials. And uh, it's really embarrassing. Sometimes you're at school and then suddenly, you know, you, your uniform is stained and this and that. So many girls, they, stay away from school during period times. And because of that, they miss school. And they miss a lot of, uh, you know, important parts in their lives. And they end up some, you know, like, not going to school anymore after some time. So because of that, and her heart, especially as a mother to reach out to the community, I just decided she's the right person, you know, we can work together. So that's why I nominated her, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing that, especially um, adding your own personal experience. And uh, yeah, it's very inspiring and uplifting to hear uh, there's so many people who are helping young girls to, to go to school and complete their education and feel empowered themselves. So let uh, we're going to present the award virtually. Of course, each of the awardees will receive one, receive the award in in the mail. But since we're here on Zoom, uh, we'll just be able to present it um, virtually. So actually, I'm going to welcome up our president again to read the award, and we'll show it on the screen, and she will read the inscription and present it. Yes, and we will 
as we're pulling up the award, we will be able to send this award. This is just a virtual copy, but you're going to get a nice physical copy of this that you can hang and share with others. Um, there we go. Thank you. So Women's Federation for World Peace USA hereby recognizes Julie Fippen on this day, June 24th, 2023. We honor your commitment to making an impact in the lives of young women and their communities by providing them with resources to cater for their health, education, and lives through your heart for community service and activism and motivating others to do the same based on your journey of overcoming unimaginable challenges. We applaud your service to the community filled with love and compassion. Congratulations to Julie Fiffin with her beautiful background, I have to say. I'm curious what it is. Beautiful, beautiful. And Julie, we would love to welcome you to center stage now to hear your story. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the beautiful introduction. It's a real honor to be here today and to be in the company of so many inspiring peers. When I was a young girl, my grandparents would take me on many cross country road trips. At nighttime, my grandfather would tell me stories about Africa, igniting my imagination. He was a missionary and spent quite a bit of time in Africa, helping build churches and schools in the rural communities. He filled me with a strength of purpose to help others and preserve wildlife. So in 2013, my family had the opportunity to visit Africa on safari in Zimbabwe. Instinctively, I thought, what can I do to help the school children? After visiting the rural communities, and we did deliver a number of school supplies, I want to add. But after visiting these rural communities, I was inspired and I was touched. I wanted to do more. In 2016, preparing for a return trip to Zimbabwe, I wanted to research to find something more impactful for the communities we would be visiting. Not much could be found online, but a number of articles about the high dropout rate of these girls, uh, from school in these rural communities due to lack of feminine hygiene products. I could not imagine my daughters not being able to attend school due to lack of feminine products. I thought this is what I need to do is deliver these to the daughters of Zimbabwe. I ordered a few washable reusable pads online. I didn't like the quality, so I thought what next? Well, I had been taught how to sew in eighth or ninth grade, so I got the idea. I ordered a sewing machine, researched healthy fabric for this use, drew a pattern, and started to sew. The fabric we use is organic hemp or bamboo fleece, both being naturally antimicrobial, antifungal, hypoallergenic, and the waterproof fabric is an eco-friendly pool. In August of 2016, with the assistance of family and friends, 324 pads were sewn, creating 108 kits. The first village we delivered to, the headmaster asked me if I would demonstrate to the girls and women how to use these items. A mother stood up and said, please, please, would you teach us how to sew these items? The next village, the same thing, please teach us how to sew these items. When we returned to the USA, I shared this story on social media and family and friends reached out saying they wanted to help. In October, 2016, Soport of Friends was established as a 501c3 charitable organization. The following year, July, 2017, I returned to Zimbabwe with friends and taught two sewing classes. We saw the excitement and hope the project provided for these girls and women. Hope provides courage and courage brings change in thought and action. And the change was clear upon subsequent visits to these communities. As formal sewing groups had been formed, they were productive, they were learning and supporting each other. The strength of kindness, dedication and respect 
was creating something powerful, something very special. I will be leaving next month for Zimbabwe. It will be my 17th trip since the first delivery of washable reusable pads in 2016. I could not have imagined that my simple idea seven years ago could have touched so many lives. We still provide the pad kits, but we see the impact of teaching. And that's our focus is to teach women and girls of all ages and including some men. No matter the age, there is a need. We provide all the supplies from sewing machines, fabric, needles, threads, um, underwear, and much more. We've assisted close to 30 communities, whether we provided training or through the sharing of information. Zimbabwe has been our primary focus, but we have worked with communities and or NGOs in Zambia, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, and even a rural village in the Himalayan mountains of India. Along this journey, there's been growth, continual learning, and of course, challenges. Initially, we were bringing in all the supplies from the USA, as I didn't know too many folks in Zimbabwe. And those that I did know weren't near a city where a supplier might be located. With lots of luggage, we always got stopped at customs. As group leader, I would be pulled aside, interrogated regarding the supplies, and quickly the conversation would turn to how much money I had to pay. Receipts were sometimes provided, but of course the amount listed typically was a lot less than what I had handed over. The process was quite intimidating at times. Finding local, local suppliers had been in my thoughts, not only to eliminate the harassment upon arrival, but the idea of supporting local small businesses while working and empowering girls and women, that's where my heart was. It has taken time, but I'm happy to share as of May 2023, we are sourcing all our supplies in Africa. We have experienced wonderful progress and we still face challenges such as sustainability and of course funding. We know other issues will arise, but working together for the betterment of humanity will provide a way. Support of Friends is a voluntary association. All travelers pay their own expenses and donations are for the mission work, empowering girls and women. I'm grateful every day to be able to help others, to see the positive change in the communities we've been welcomed in and to continue learning from others. I want to say thank you to my family and friends from around the globe for their helping hands and generosity. And thank you for allowing me to share my story, experiences, mission, and, and hopes. We are a global family when led by love. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. That was amazing. Uh, for all of you who are joining us, I hope you'll write your appreciation and your love and congratulations for her and and her organization and their work in the chat yeah that was just so amazing just with your heart you you know saw a need and just with the heart of kindness and love and the desire to help those in who have this need uh, you just accomplished so much and it's not just about helping people but also helping them to help themselves right so that mm -hmm. That's real empowerment, and it's so powerful when you can give that to to girls and women. That that feeling of you know I can do this, I I can accomplish uh, great things, and I'm not held back. So thank you so much again, Julie. And we just with this we want to encourage you to keep going forward, and we we're here with you. So yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so the next awardee is um, Elizabeth Lim. She is the founder and CEO of Scream Run Tell. She is an advocate for the prevention of sexual abuse of children through education and empowerment. 
She currently as the founder and CEO of Scream Run Tell, Ms. Lim oversees in internal and external operations, as well as funding and communi community education. Recognized on a national level for the Scream Run Tell method of child sex abuse prevention, Ms. Lim has trained in law enforcement, medical, child care, and family counseling professionals. Uh, to enhance their efforts to end sex abuse against children. She conducts training, keynote, and workshop programs for numerous local and national conferences, social and civic organizations, elementary and preschools. In partnership with the Florida Crime Prevention Association, Ms. Lim provides workshops in the Scream Run Tell method, which trains law enforcement, counselors, and advocates on the most advanced cutting edge techniques and strategies in the prevention of child sex abuse. So um, that's uh, from her bio and I know there's a lot more to share, but uh, we also wanna get a personal note from the nominator for this Her Story Award. That would be from Mrs. Marie Francois Mitchell, who is our chairwoman representative in Women's Federation Hawaii. So please take it away. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's an honor to be here and to introduce our dear friend Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Lim. This is the fruit of love and it's a collective work. It's really like a waterfall from one person sharing about these friends she knew and uh, our dear friend, common friend, Rafia, Mrs. Rafia Hasina told me last year about this wonderful lady she knew who really, uh, is a, is, a, is a heart walking the streets of uh, Honolulu and Florida and all over the world, helping uh, children and uh, pre preventing children from uh, child sex abuse. When I heard this, I was very, very touched uh, also because of personal experience in this area. And uh, uh, this brought back, uh, of course, traumatic memories, and uh, in those days, uh, back to ch my own childhood, there was nothing. We couldn't talk, say anything, not even to our family. So when I heard about it, of course, I, I, I knew we, we need to meet. Then the time passed and Christmas, we had a basket uh, gi love giving uh, pro project. And uh, our dear friend again, Rafia showed up with her best friend, Elizabeth, and that's where we met the first time. Elizabeth came to help us. We did baskets together and I was so touched by her bubbling personality, by her giving personality. And uh, after the project, after we finished the basket, she stayed behind and we shared and she shared about her project. And again, you know, I felt this is definitely uh, a person that our platform could introduce to the rest of our community and share share each other's uh, uh, initiative so that we know, so that the word goes out and that we can also learn from it ourselves and pass it on. So uh, with this being said, I also want to thank all our ladies at Women's Federation in uh, Honolulu who are passing the baton to others and uh, of course, it goes beyond the ocean. It goes beyond the continent as we could see today. And this platform was started by Mother Moon. So through her overcoming tremendous difficulties. So I think my time is probably just done. So as Elizabeth did overcome incredible opposition and difficulties, uh, I will stop here with deep gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, yes, of course, we're, you know, very saddened and uh, very terrible, you know, issue that uh, is being addressed by Elizabeth and her organization. But we, I feel like, you know, we can feel hope because people are really recognizing this issue and really doing what's needed to, to protect children. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so we really want to honor that and um, recognize that there there's more work to be done, and there are many wonderful people and amazing hearts that are doing that work. 
So to present the Her Story Award, I'm going to welcome up our president again, Kayleigh Moffitt, to uh, read the award for us. Let's uh, bring it up on the screen. Thank you, Katerina. And you know, earlier this week when we had a chance to meet with Elizabeth, what you can feel from her is she exudes such a deep sense of peace and love to every person that could meet her, I imagine. And even that is is deserving to just be awarded you personally. So I just I wanted to add that. Go ahead and bring up the the uh, award. So Women's Federation for World Peace USA hereby recognizes Elizabeth Lim on this day, June 24th, 2023. We honor your commitment of championing the cause of eradicating sexual abuse through education and the empowerment of both children and adults to be well-informed and advocate for change based on your journey of overcoming unimaginable challenges. We applaud your service to the community filled with love and compassion. Congratulations to Elizabeth Lim. We are so honored to be able to give you this award today, and we invite you to share your story and your wisdom with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see. Well, so aloha, everybody. And that lets you know where I'm from. <laughs> and uh, first, I just want to thank those who nominated me, but more importantly, those who took the time to get to know me. Um, I myself, uh, honestly, I have uh, not uh, done anything by myself. It's always been up being uplifted by others and especially by women. And this award is no different. So um, still, I am so honored uh, to be nominated for um, the Her Story Award. So I'm actually going to do something I don't normally do. I, I normally have, you know, little bits and then share but um, I'll let you know why I'm going to read. I think you'll get it. I'm actually going to read for the first time <laughs> and you'll, you'll know why. So if you see me looking up, I have them taped up there and I'll go ahead and get started. So um, uh, I hope to bring courage to anyone facing an impossible task right now and say to you, you are enough. In my life um, has been a journey of many stops. It has never really mattered where I came from, but rather who I have touched along the way. I truly present myself with no special titles. <clears throat> I'm not yet an alumni to an elite college. In fact, to be honest, I have failed most things and not by a little, but rather a lot. School was really difficult. Speaking a different language, I learned to read and write in fourth grade only because Ms. Chandler cared. Being um, encouraged by Mr. Beeney in sixth grade, I was able to do what in my eyes was considered impossible. Seventh grade, the first semester, and eighth grade, the second semester. <laughs> and in going, um, I received my first ever award. And this is my second book. In high school, I knew that if I worked hard, I would receive in college, a high school graduate. And all the teachers um, advocated for me and helped me through that. I uh, learned through them how to advocate for myself and the things that I needed. In college, I would quickly fall behind. As I was a dys dyslexic student, school was very difficult and at times, um, I would fail and have to start over again. I was also working full time just to keep, keep shelter. And I went on failing college time and time again until I graduated in 1988 at the Associate Technical College as an EMT and so on. Through my education journey, I learned to strengthen my strengths and use them for good. I embraced my weaknesses, that helped me to have compassion for others and keep myself humble. There is absolutely nothing that I have done on my own. There has always been someone to help me along the way. My first recollection of hunger 
My first recollection of life was hunger. I never knew where I lived or my economical state, which was poverty. I knew nothing about the color of my skin, nor did I care. All I knew, I was hungry. And for a child, that was the difference. Who had food and who didn't? Shortly after, I was separated from my sisters to go live with nuns in hiding from what I did not know at the time. But I was happy there. I was fed. And I was sure the first time that I, the first stages of trusting God, I remember learning to pray and having a grateful heart. Yet this was no place to raise a child. So I happily left with a six foot two man, <laughs> which later became, sorry, known to be the best thing that ever happened to me. And he was also my grandfather. I lived happy there, with the feeling of belonging. I knew I was loved and that I belonged, but that ended shortly when I was brought to America by strangers. Until this point, I knew nothing of my mother. <clears throat> I had almost forgotten the little girls that I called sisters. I was in a strange land with strangers. You see, my mother was a visionary woman and she took that chance as so many, so many people do to come to America for the American dream. Yes, she left us behind for a short time to give us a better life. She believed in people and doing good for others. She believes in the American dream, not just for herself, but rather everyone who wants it. As soon as she brought us, she brought her siblings, her cousins, and others. And she's still a beacon of light. She says, I am a social worker for God, and there's lots to do. So I grew up with a strong woman. In no way was she a pushover. And for me, that was difficult. I had not yet cultivated my relationship with her, not because of her, but rather because she seemed to be a stranger to me. I've seen hardship in my life, like the ones that you feel someone sucked the wind out of you. But hear me out, in every, with every man or woman that has shown weakness and has been led by evil actions towards me, I've experienced others that have shared kindness, love, shown patience, giving me strength and encouraged me. I have also mm, want to share about, nope, I have to start over. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and now what I'm about to share is not a new story. In fact, it's rather old and it has been going on for generations. It's a difficult story. And I share it because I want, because I'm one of many voices. I'm the story about your next door neighbor, the story of the pe what people hide. Please listen. I share this story in hopes that someone today will know they're not alone. I'm not ashamed of where I came from. I'm not ashamed where I came from. or who I am, or who I have become. This is my journey, and in it, I have learned to be more kind and even see more good in people. I have learned to be, to have a willing heart to never give up. My family has conquered poverty against all odds. I have come from a complicated family dynamics. I have dyslexia and have suffered sex abuse. But none of this is who I am. I choose what defines me. I steadfast in faith, no matter what my circumstances are. The desire to help those around me and a genuine love for people. That is what I want people to remember me. And for those qualities, lead me, led me to become an EMT and at times, was when I was only the only female in the class, later creating the SRTEL method, a program helping children and parents to see the possible signs of 
abuse before it happens while robbing, while not robbing the innocence of children. I have writ written youth programs for the YWCA to empower junior high girls to have a voice. I have traveled all over teaching the SRTEL methods to countless officers, teachers, social workers, and so on. I'm a caretaker for elderly people whenever I'm called to do. I recently started to face yoga for those who have experienced trauma. I'm a mother of five amazing children who silently go around doing good in the world. I have been married twice, first time three years, and the second going on 30. What defines me as a woman is my kind heart, willingness to care and help others, respecting nature and knowing I am a daughter of heavenly parents. As women, we should never think less of ourselves because of the lack of titles. For as we walk through life, we are heroes for one person at a time. We are teachers to children as we help and nurture them with a smile. We must walk upright. We for we can move and shift the energy of one room for good. We can stand tall for peace, um, for the for peace here today, and bring peace into our homes. Through through this, we will bring peace <clears throat> into our communities, our countries, and our world. And that's how it was intended. We should share our shoulders for the youth so they can see how to shape the world for good. Let us be engaged in small acts of kindness. Honestly, we never need to ask a true woman how to have compassion because she's already living it. In closing, I want to give a special thanks to the woman affectionately known as Mother Moon, our mother of peace. I had the opportunity to finish reading her book. <laughs> And I am so full of gratitude and grateful for her example, how she loves all of us. Now, I'm sorry it took so long, but it was so important for me. And in front of all of you to share and for you to see my weakness of having to read in um, and know that um, no matter how we struggle, we can still help others and that we should never um, stop helping. So thank you. I completely am so honored about um, this beautiful uh, award and I will cherish it forever. So thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, um, Elizabeth. That I mean, I feel so honored just to hear your story and to hear your heart. All right, I'm going to cry now. I just, it was so beautiful to hear, um, hear your heart, um, especially because, I mean, for me personally, um, through the challenges you went through, you, instead of becoming angry or resentful or, you know, overcoming or digesting those feelings, whatever you went through, um, you, you said you learned to be more kind and you brought the kindness that others showed you, the feeling times in your life where you felt belonged and you felt you knew you were loved. And now you're bringing that to other people, to children, so they also can have that experience of knowing they're loved and they belong. So that's, as a mom, I'm also feel like that's so important for the younger generations, for children to, to have that experience. So we're so grateful for you and for all the people you're working with in the field and uh, just thank you for your beautiful heart. Um, yeah. <laughs> so everyone, please uh, write your thanks and congratulations in the chat. And um, we will move on to our third and final um, Her Story Awardee for today, Ms. Jan Whalen. She is president of Whalen Voices, LLC. She is a teacher, a book creation coach, and a mentor to writers who believes the best, we, the best way we can share the wisdom of our age is to tell and write our stories. In addition to her literary achievements, Jan has dedicated herself to nurturing emerging writers. As a mentor and writing workshop facilitator at different events, 
she has guided countless aspiring authors, imparting her wisdom and expertise with generosity and compassion. So to give a little bit more of a personal note, who is uh, Jan Whalen? We're gonna hear from Ms. Glenda Lambert. She uh, nominated uh, this wonderful, amazing leader for the Her Story Award. Uh, Glenda Lambert is our Global Women's Peace Network representative in uh, Arizona. So welcome, Glenda. Awesome. Oh my goodness, the stories I'm hearing are just amazing. Thank you so much. So today I would like to share with you an amazing woman, Jen Whalen. You know how I got to know Jen? Because of this book. <laughs> we were all in a tea, you know, you all, I love my teas. And I went to this wonderful annual Southwestern Tea Party and I had a table and was going for my tea, you know, to get it from somebody else. And I passed her table and I saw each person had a book like this. And it is an amazing book. The book is like Conversations with Well-Seasoned Women. I'm like, oh, I'm a well-seasoned woman. I would like to know what she's talking about. So I met her and I talked with her and it was last year. And we have been, been friends on, you know, until now. I have to tell you, Jen is an amazing woman. She is like a teacher to me. She is vibrant, amazing, knowledgeable, spiritual. I mean, it is all these wonderful elements that you want to see in a good friend, in a good sister. I have to honestly say, Dan is such a wonderful inspiration to other women, especially if you're 45 and up. You know, she really has that charisma and the knowledge to really put all her thoughts on paper. And if she can help you put your story out there, she will also help you put your story on paper. And it is what I really experienced from my wonderful friend, Jen. You know, I have to really say she has an amazing supportive husband, Russ, and he's on the, you know, on the, on the Zoom too. And I really feel so proud, you know, to really, you know, give this opportunity to Jen to really receive a wonderful award, a Her Story Award. This is going to be her story where she's going to be sharing a little bit with you about, you know, how she became that kind of person she is today. But I'm so grateful that we could be here together and really you all can get to know Jen yourself. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Glenda, for sharing that. A little personal nugget of uh, contact and inspiration. So uh, to present the award, we're going to welcome up our president, Kayleigh Moffitt, again, to uh, to read the inscription. Yeah. And let's uh, pull it up on the screen. Yes. And when everyone gets a chance to see Jen, you'll, you'll feel instantly the vibrancy of her she's she's got all these books behind her and her red glasses and her bright spirit and I a big shout out to her husband who proudly represented in our zoom chat today we love husbands who really support their wives okay so Women's Federation for World Peace USA hereby recognizes Jan Whalen on this day June 24th 2023 we honor your commitment to making an impact in the lives of others by your nurturing and encouraging spirit to help them find their voice through their life experiences and sharing their stories, and in so doing, creating a community of change. We applaud your service to the community filled with love and compassion. Congratulations to Jan. It is our great honor to give you the Her Story Award, and we welcome you at this time to share your story and your words of wisdom for all of us. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. I am truly humbled. Thank you, Glenda, for nominating me. And especially when I hear Julie and Elizabeth's story, it's hard to compose myself because they are truly powerful women making a change. And I just love that. I love women's stories. Um, I guess when I think of my, my story, I think of three challenges, and yet those three challenges actually are opportunities, and so um, I, will, I will share them with you. And the first challenge was that I am the oldest of eight, and um, that meant that my youth was spent on a lot of caring on, of siblings and uh, not a lot of fun. 
And it was a little bit lonely because I didn't really feel a part of the group as much as I felt in charge of the group. And yet later, I discovered that I'm very comfortable with people of any age and that I can, you know, lead and committees and in you know different kinds of groups workshops and so I really have to say thank you mom and dad for your choices <laughs> um, so the second um, challenge was really quite serious and it is that I missed a month of first grade now in my day first grade was the time where you learned how to read and so as you can guess I was not a very good reader and I didn't really connect of being missing from school uh, with, with that. Um, I just remember I didn't get a holy card for reading a, a sheet perfectly. So, um, but anyway, um, I, I was thinking to myself, I don't think you're very smart, you know, and you're just not as good as other people. And so that was a feeling that I carried with me for a long time. But later, fast forward to a time when I was in college, I was undecided, and I went with a, a girlfriend to the lab school at our college. She was going to be a teacher, and I, when I looked at the second grade teacher teaching, I thought, you know what, I could do that. And so I taught sixth grade for several years, and a, a, you might not be surprised about this, remedial reading and human relations uh, was a, a topic I got to teach at a community college in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, and later, I created a program called Character Safari. Now, what this was is we trained teenagers to think about what made them successful in high school. And they would go down to the elementaries and middle schools and talk about their values and how to survive high school because, you know, high school can be sort of a jungle. And I'll never forget this one day, I took six of my character safari guides into the chamber office, the Cedar Rapids area chamber of commerce for the education meeting. And those kids, they just were, they, they made a presentation and they were so confident, they were so poised and everybody listened with, you know, the, the most attention as they told the adults how you inspire children. And I was standing in the side and I said to myself, this is the best speech of your life. And 20 years later, it really still is. So all of these education things has to do with the self-esteem that I probably um, have struggled with and might, might even have a little bit of residual um, uh, self-esteem issues today. So, but again, you know, as well-seasoned women, we, we have our ways to cope. Now, the last challenge was about my vision, and it's a little more complicated. Um, when I was 18, I thought, well, I'm just going to get married and have a lot of kids, and I'll be a housewife just like mom. Uh, the only problem was <laughs> that the boy I was going to marry um, was now Ross McCollum. Uh, actually, he uh, I found out he was cheating on me, and so you know I didn't know what to do because I had no plan B. And so I started to follow what called to me and I went crazy. I was like a, a, a sheep in a meadow, just testing everything. I moved 39 times. I have in my lifetime belonged to six different Christian denominations. I worked with many types of jobs. I was divorced um, to my first husband and married Ross. Uh, after teaching several years, I was a presentation coach and then a book shepherd. I wrote my first book in 2011. It's called Rock Solid Confidence. And then I went on to write three more books. Um, and I, then I created a line of greeting cards. So whenever I start a project, I get so excited and think, this is it. This is it. This is my purpose. And I would love to have one purpose, but uh, it was not to be. It was sort of like climbing several hills, but never quite getting to the top of anyone. I am so thankful for the mentors I had and the support that I had from my seven siblings. Thank you, mom and dad again. Teachers, actually both husbands, and my two children uh, in their own unique ways. So many people were there to tell me what the next right thing would be, as Michael J. Fox would say. And through paying attention, helping authors, 
earning my black belt in Taekwondo and a master, master of Arts in Servant Leadership, I finally got it. My epiphany came one day when I was reading a poem called When You Look at the Stars and Yawn. And there were three lines that Aaron, Aaron Zeitling had said. Every time I read these lines, I swear I can hear God's thunderous voice. And here are the three lines. If you look at the stars and yawn, if you see suffering and don't cry out, then I have created you in vain. Pretty heavy. <laughs> uh, but what I think it means for me personally is that I need to use my voice. My job, you know, doesn't really matter what I do, but my real job is to see them, to see the people who are in my world, to comfort their worries and pain, and to tell them about their gifts and their talents. Because a lot of times, you know, we need that. We don't know that to let them know they are worthy, special, and loved, and to be a light to help them bloom and grow. And that's pretty much it. So I will continue with this mission through the story coaching, um, my volunteer work at in my PEO group and Flor the Florence Crittenton organizations with my soul-to-soul -soul workshops coming up this fall uh, for, again, well-seasoned women. And uh, a new book coming out uh, where Chili Millie will be featured. And coincidentally, she's a, a person who, a woman who does not mind speaking her mind. The most important discovery I made that these three challenges and any others I've had drive my passion for serving. So today I am filled with help and gratitude. And after hearing the other two stories, a lot of humility, <laughs> words can't express how grateful I am that I am included in this list. And I thank President Kaylee uh, for uni, uh, uh, Katerina, Ms. Glenda, Grace, and everybody else in the organization um, for all the things that you do for the world. And for those of you who took the time to be here today for this ceremony, it's, you know, there's lots of things to do, but it really means a lot to, to all of us. And um, so I would just end with saying, may God continue to bless your work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jan. Oh, that was a, that was great. Wonderful. I, I feel from you, the message is really, and also from the other two speakers, awardees, you know, it's not important like what we do. More important is with the heart that we do it with. And, you know, you're just heart of you know, you've done so many different things as you were listing them out. I'm sure there were many others that you couldn't get to, but you really found a way to use your voice and, you know, uplift others in whatever you may be doing. So I feel like, um, uh, yeah, that's so important to, to be the light to others through wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Um, it's the kindness, the heart, the compassion. That's, that's the most important part. And I just love your exuberance and uh, your light. I, I think we can all feel your your light <laughs> here, even through Zoom. Um, thank you. So yes, thank you so much. And I, again, thank you so much to all of our awardees. There's such unique stories amongst each of them, but really, I feel you know so much love, so much heart, and caring for others um, within each and every one of them. And uh, we're just so grateful for for them and their work and their stories. I hope these stories can go far and wide. We really need to share this of inspiration, this upliftment, this empowering message of, of courage, of uh, you know, all the goodness that was shared here today with more people around the world. Um, so yes, we're going to be wrapping up. I know we would love to sit around and talk more and hear more from each and every one of them. And I encourage everyone to please write your congratulations again and your thanks and your um, anything you gained in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Um, before we conclude, there's a few announcements, some things coming up. And of course, we're gonna take a group photo together. Um, we always gotta take a photo for the event. Um, so the first announcement, um, we want to invite all of you to join us, join our network, Women's Federation for World Peace. Um, someone will post in the chat a, a link for our Peace Builder membership. 
This is really the, the major way our supporters can uh, support our work, support uh, programs like this one and many others to uplift women and uplift these unique voices. Uh, so we would love for you to check it out and hope you can join, join the network as a Peace Builder member. There are different levels, different uh, according to different budgets, but really just know that you're, um, as a member, you're joining this wide, this deep and wide group of amazing women. Um, the other announcement is if you are a leader of an organization, we do have a, a special way we would love to connect and work together with you. And that is through our global friends. Uh, we have many, uh, several, quite a lot of global friends who are, you know, we're passionate about the same things. We're working on different um, different areas and we really want to pool our resources and work together. And that way we can have a greater impact. So you can check it out. The, the link is in the chat. If you are an organizational leader. We would love to connect and expand our impact, support each other. We've got to support each other as women, right? Um, and then we have two upcoming events. We hope you will, uh, you'll uh, stay in touch. We'll send out more information, especially if you are here, you registered for this event, we have your contact information. Um, the next one coming up is we have a webinar on July 29th, another virtual event. The topic of that one is media and the SDGs, the impact of messaging on realizing healthy and sustainable peace. So. Mark that as a save the date, July 29th, media and the SDGs, very important discussion. And the next Her Story Award, just like this one, we want to, of course, continue to honor and uplift these amazing stories. That will be August 26th. So also mark your calendars, um, save the date. We're gonna be hearing some more wisdom and encouragement. Um, and that is all the announcements that I have for you today. And I don't know if our president wanted to make one final comment. Sure, I mean, I was literally just typing in the chat, but I I feel like today I took a, a world renowned class and I've walked away with you know so much enrichment for my own life and my own work because of the stories that were shared today and the wisdom that was shared today. So thank you so much for, I'm so grateful. Of course, this is part of our work, but I'm personally so grateful and enriched by being in contact with these amazing, amazing women. And thank you to our chairwomen and our leaders who are working and supporting these kinds of leaders in our, in our different states around the United States. So congratulations to everybody. Thank you. And we're really looking forward to continue supporting and working with women like you. Back to you, Katerina. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for those uh, final comments. Let us take a, a, a photo. <laughs> so if you are incognito but would like to be in the photo, please uh, get yourself ready. Um, you can turn on your camera and make sure your background is nice and get ready. I don't know if Yumi is going to direct this part or. Yeah, okay. I will do that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, your best smiles for today. Okay. One, two, three, smile. One more. Keep smiling. We have two pages. Okay. Smile. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. Back to you, Katarina. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you to our three amazing awardees for today. And that is all. I hope you have a lovely Saturday and the rest of your weekend. And goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Yes. Aloha. Congratulations, <laughs> Jen. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Congratulations. There we go. Thank you for the best. And wow, wow everybody, wow, hi, wow. was. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, my goodness. Love you all. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Oh. Thank you all. Hello, Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.